it then took a while for us to ultimately snuff out core al-Qaeda in the Fatah, and there are still lingering remnants, but at no point was there ever a sense that, in fact, it could uh, you know, do catastrophic damage to us. All right. So he's saying that there were, ne never was there a sense that al-Qaeda in the Fatah could ever do catastrophic damage to us. Welcome aboard. That was yesterday, NPR Radio, Barack Obama. Uh, before we get to Rick Unger and C. Edmund Wright on the panel, so there was never any sense that, that, that al-Qaeda could do any you know, tr damage that would harm the country. That we're, but yet, let's go back to 2014 and listen to what Barack Obama said just a little over a year ago. Russia's actions are a problem. They don't pose the number one national security threat to the United States. I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan, which is part of the reason why uh, the United States, showing its continued international leadership, uh, has organized uh, a forum over the last several years that's been able to help eliminate uh, that threat in a consistent way. All right, so Rick Unger, senior political contributor for Forbes.com, co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM, and C. Edmund Wright, columnist for Breitbart.com and for the American Thinker. So C. Edmund Wright. So Barack Obama yesterday is saying, you know, he's trying to downplay the threat of ISIS to the country and national security. And he said, you know, in Al-Qaeda, you know, they never posed. A, yet there he was talking a year ago and before ISIS was even an issue. This was early 2014, talking about how he goes to sleep every night, thinking that, uh, worrying that a, a, a nuclear weapon's going to go off in New York. Who is going to do that? The guy on the street corner? <laughs> you, you know, a couple of things he said lately kind of made me scratch my head. Number one, he seems to put the bar, Steve, that as long as it's not catastrophic damage, you know, it's okay. It's not a big threat. But the other thing was uh, blaming the media yeah. for people fearing ISIS. But what I'd like to say is I don't think people fear ISIS. I think people are angry at a federal government that won't do its job, won't even admit who the enemy is, let alone uh, do its job in fighting the enemy. Rick? I don't know where to begin. I mean, I don't know who he was referring to when he spoke a year ago. I see the conflict you're raising, however, and I don't think that I actually believe him when he says we never feared catastrophic damage from, uh, from uh, whoever it might be, Al-Qaeda or anybody else. So what's I wrong think we with do him? Feel, what's wrong with him? You know, sometimes when you're doing radio interviews, you say things that don't always match up with what you said earlier. My question, though, I'm going to throw something else into the discussion. You know what can do catastrophic damage? Cyber terrorism. When are oh, we going I mean, to please. get around to talking about You're cyber terrorism? You're preaching to the choir. The electric grid, God forbid, goes down. Yeah, they say nine out of every ten Americans could die if it lasts for over two, three years. Right. We're, this we're isn't progressive or conservative. Yeah, no. This is cyber terrorism. Yeah, all right, all right, but let's move on. Let, let, let's move. On. I want to move on to Chris Christie because uh, Newsmax.com has a great story up um, and uh, by uh, Todd Beeman, and it's based on an interview with uh, Ryan Morrow uh, of the Clarion Project. And uh, they're talking about how a lot of people in the Jewish community are concerned with Chris Christie, not because he doesn't support Israel, but because he doesn't get uh, mm -hmm. the Islamic threat, uh, C. Edmund Wright, because he's, he's, he, 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 um, he has pro-Islamic views. For instance, he appointed Sahel Muhammad uh, to the bench in New Jersey. This was a guy who represented the Fort Dix Six crew, who tried to blow up Fort Dix in, in uh, New Jersey, and at the time said, shouldn't be called Islamic terror. It has nothing to do with Islam. He appointed him to the bench. Uh, he also refused to condemn the Ground Zero Mosque, which was proposed on my radio show at the time, on WOR radio. He said, I don't have an opinion. It's not up to me. I mean, he's very weak, and he, he doesn't believe that Sharia law is an actual threat to this country. He has said that. He calls those who do crazies. So he's weak on this issue. Yeah, you know, you bring up the Ground Zero Mosque, which is where I was going, because, Steve, I think that issue was probably when Chris Christie's appeal to the base sort of started to unravel. And, of course, now, four or five years later, we're all talking about Chris Christie as pure establishment. But that was not the case when he was first elected governor, first going up against the unions. I think the Ground Zero Mosque was the beginning of this unraveling. And I agree, he's, he's worrisome on this issue. What about it, uh, Rick? Yeah, I, I can't believe that I'm going to be put in a position to defend <laughs> Governor Chris Christie, Christie <laughs> but I will. Look, the fact that he is tolerant of Muslims in his state and, and has put them into some powerful positions does not mean that he, is, he has pro-Islamic views. That's a bit of a stretch, and I think we have to be very careful. But look, here's what's really happening here. This is where politics meets up with reality. 
He's got a 3% Muslim population. He has to take them serious on election day. I will, however, stick with him on this. this. Somebody's got to tell me how Sharia law is going to supplant the Constitution and take over our laws. I didn't take Sharia law 101 in law There's school. already They're been a judge in offering. New Jersey who cited Sharia You've law wouldn't one you, and judge. wouldn't convict a man for raping right. his wife because one he said judge. you can't rape a wife. You know how many wife. judges we have in this All country? Right. Well, that's the, that's the open door. All right. Uh, Donald Trump in the latest Quinnipiac poll out today has a four-point lead over Ted Cruz. In the other national polls, he's had, you know, 14, 17, 23. Uh, C. Edmund Wright, is this uh, significant or an, uh, an aberration? I, hey, who predicted a year ago Ted Cruz would win the nomination? I, I want to I take that bow again. Uh, I think it's coming down to Cruz and Trump. I think that's where it's headed. You know, I think the key statistic here is uh, Trump, Cruz, and Carson are over 60% combined. Um, and meanwhile, the number one establishment candidate appears to be Marco Rubio, who actually broke onto the scene uh, defeating establishment Charlie Crist. So uh, there's been an incredible rollback of Absolutely. the Republican establishment. Uh, Rick, go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, this is something you won't hear very often either. I agree with C. Edmund Wright. He's got it exactly right. I think we are finally in a year where we are not going to see an establishment candidate. I think it is going to come down to Trump versus Cruz. And if I had to put money on it today, I think Cruz indeed could be the candidate. Well, it's going to be an interesting uh, year. That's for darn sure. And we have more debates already in January coming right up after the holidays. Stick around for all that. See Edmund Wright, Rick Unger. Thank you both very much. Up next, Bill Richardson joins us. Don't go away.